pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hair? Yeah. No, no, she's a she's like a pretty famous trans girl, YouTube trans girl in the beginning. But anywho, should we go back to it? Let's do it. All right. Girls to the front of the line, linked arms, no stress, cause we're dressed up to the nines. Mini skirts, it's below my hips. Dye my hair blonde, pillow chalk on my lips. Boys on the dance floor, it's time to clear the patriarchy's over. You can hold our hair. Back at home, we replay the breakup. Stay up all night, fall asleep in our makeup. Mom brought me into the world, sister taught me how to girl. Love ya. That was it. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you, Dylan, for putting <laughs> for that together because that was yeah. super fun. Yeah, it was super cute. And I definitely get like what she was going for as far as like the vibe. Yeah. I could definitely see like I got the legally blonde kind of vibe from it and almost like the Taylor Swift. It reminded me of that one Taylor Swift video too, but like it's just, you know, cutesy. I, I also thought that, you know, she, you know, she kind of did nods to being trans and like she thanked the girls for helping her learn how to, you know, be a girl, mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of stuff. And so yeah. I thought it was kind of sweet. You know, I think it's been interesting to watch her over the last couple of years. I mean, I couldn't imagine transitioning. I've transitioned online, but very like my, like a five people see it or something, right? She's got like millions of followers. She's all over the place. Like I couldn't imagine what that would be like um, and kind of managing all of that stuff. You know what I mean? So, because, you know, she was getting, she couldn't do any, I don't know. I guess a lot of what she was doing is because she was trans, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then also that was also kind of creating a whole bunch of flack as well. I think that what you're saying, you know, some people use um, the internet as coping tools to help them come out, to help them deal with everyday life, just to, to be comfortable in your own skin. You know, everybody uses for different things, um, but I'm super proud of her because you know as well as I do mm -hmm. that it's very hard to be, um, to open yourself up to society. You know, and it's not just, you know, I don't want to throw it back to, but, you know, the, the dark, dark web can be very cruel yeah, because yeah. people hide behind these cameras, you know, and they're the devil himself. So to, yeah, yeah. to be vulnerable like that is, is phenomenal. And then to embrace it and turn it into this, this empire for yourself and continue to have fun with it. Cause it looks like it's not even work. It's just all fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely become a lot of fun. And I, when we're thinking about visibility, you know, I think it's, one of many narratives, you know, I, I think it is important when we're talking about trans day of visibility, like I know how important it was for me to see girls like me um, in order to begin to see me and see who I could become. And so, you know, and, and the thing of it is, you know, we need to see all different kinds of ways to live as trans women, to live as girls and women. So they're not this one, you know, like just watch this one music video and you're like, oh, that's what it means to be a girl. And it's like, no, that's part of some yes. experiences of being a girl or maybe a time in your life as a girl. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't speak for anything and everything and it's not trying to. Yeah, I think that that, that that's a very key point. And to piggyback on that, you know, um, it's hard to, to get up in the morning and know that you've got to go out into the big bad world and, and mm -hmm. face people, you know, um, kn knowing full well that some days you don't even want to go outside because you know what's gonna, what's out there for you. Yeah. You no, know, even you say when when we're doing our videos and when you're doing the comments, you're deleting what? 50 sometimes of these hurtful things that people are saying. Thank God 
you shielded my eyes from it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that is great when you talk about trans visibility. It's like, mm -hmm. like I was saying, earlier, people just, we all want to be seen and we all want to be respected, you know? And I, and I also said that everybody have, wants their day in the sun mm. and um, everybody should respect it for having their day in the sun, like Juneteenth, Trans Visibility Day, St. Patrick's Day. I mean, I could go on and on, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think visibility is- I mean, it's just, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's I think visibility is really important for like identities or ways of life or people who've not had this, had representation or had to kind of be in the shadow or the dark or, or just people haven't paid attention enough yeah. to see them and, you know, really want to like be in relationship with people. And yeah. so I think, I think visibility is, is a small, but big part of, um, of beginning to, to change because I think a lot of people don't, like I think sometimes what it takes is to meet a trans person or work with a trans person or watch it. You know what I mean? Like it, it takes you actually having a real like connection with a trans person to see that they're just humans, just like everyone else. Because when all you're looking at is maybe what you saw in the media or what other people are telling you, you know, and, and it's so foreign from your own experience. Um, I don't think people, sh you know, we don't expect you to know, like, you know what I mean? But there is an element of like compassion and understanding that should just be given to anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, everybody's transition is different. You know, no transition is exactly the same. Everybody mm -hmm. is, you know, different. The, the way I transitioned from the way that you transitioned, you know, when I transitioned or how I you know, it's all different, but yet it seems to fall under all the un under the all the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, which which brings us to a unity, right. you know. And um, I was looking at something at work where we're celebrating. Uh, we had a huge uh, meeting today on trans visibility, and just some of the stuff that they're saying about how many of these laws in like 58 states or, you know, 48 mm -hmm. of them and, you know, are passing these trans laws, anti-trans laws. Yeah. Like for what? Yeah. What has any trans against, person done? One, especially against young people. Exactly. Just trying to target his mind. And I haven't heard of any trans person yet that has done anything to any child. I have yet to no. hear of it. Have you heard of anything before I start yeah. talking that way? No, no. I mean, I, to say that it's never happened is probably not a thing, but it's not someone's transness that makes them, you know, like it's something else in them that is, you know, that they're doing, the transness has nothing to do with that. Just like heterosexually, sexuality has nothing to do with, you know, pedophilia. Like that's mm -hmm. a completely different situation. And that's not something that, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's like saying that all black people are this or all, people who live in the South are all like whatever, you know, people want to generalize about people that's, you know, not helpful. How do you, sometimes do you, sometimes I feel there's a lot of people, there are some people talking about right now, there's like a lot of trans people that are kind of like online, 